What's going on, everybody? And welcome back to another episode of Oh My Gosh. If you give a young player some time to develop, they will most likely turn into somebody who can contribute to winning basketball. As always, I am your host, Zach Cronin. And today, we're going to be talking about the Dallas Mavericks, but not in the way that most people talk about the Dallas Mavericks. As you can see in the title, this is not going to be a video about Luka Doncic. It's not going to be a video about Kyrie Irving, but instead, it is going to be a video about Dante Exum. Normally, when people do talk about the Mavericks, they talk about exclusively Luka or Kyrie for obvious reasons. Luka is probably going to win the MVP or at least be the runner up. Kyrie's averaging 25 and 5 and is like four tenths of a point away from joining the 50 40 90 club. Sometimes we talk about Derek Lively. Sometimes we talk about Tim Hardaway building Brick City. But no, today we are going to talk about. Dante Exum, because not only is he a valuable piece of Dallas's rotation, but he is one of the best recent stories to come into the NBA. I remember back back in my day. I remember back in my day, and this is I really feel I really feel old talking about this. But I remember when Dante Exum first came onto the prospect scene. I was in high school. I think around then, Dante is only like a year older than me, and he was one of the first big guards with legitimate point guard skills. The wave that we saw with folks like Lonzo Ball, Ben Simmons, Dante Exum was almost one of the precursors to that, one of the pioneers, if you will, to the big guard movement, because this was when the NBA was first starting to go positionless again this was back in 2014 2015 2013 ish actually if you really talk about him like being a prospect and it's this pretty unknown kid from australia social media hadn't exploded quite yet there were still a lot of foreign players who were prominent in their respective countries but that nobody really knew about it's nothing like how it was with Wemby over the last year but Exum born in Australia gets drafted fifth overall in the 2014 NBA draft ahead of guys like Marcus Smart and Julius Randle also ahead of that Nikola Jokic guy I'm sure you've heard about him he's doing pretty good things for the Denver Nuggets but there was a lot of hype surrounding Exum he was a five-star prospect by ESPN he got a 97 rating which was tied for the highest in the class among guys like uh, Jaleel Okafor Tyus Jones Cliff Alexander, that's a fucking name we haven't heard in a while. Additionally, he was projected to be a high lottery pick. NBADraft.net actually did a comparison of him to Penny Hardaway, which, as you would expect, is some lofty expectations to reach. And as we do with high lottery picks, we tend to set relatively unrealistic expectations for them coming into the NBA. But the point remains that Dante Exum was supposed to be the next big thing. Literally. So he gets drafted at fifth overall, going to the Utah Jazz, and he plays like shit his rookie season. He shot just 35% from the field, averaged 4.8 points, 2.4 assists, appeared in all 82 games, however, and started 41 of them. But there was still a lot of rawness to his game. Remember, he was 19 when he came into the league. It takes a lot to develop a 19 year old kid into a good basketball player. Not only that, it takes a long time to assess what kind of player they can even be. Like, was Dante Exum ever going to be the number one in an offense? Was he going to serve more of like Alonzo Ball role, being a lockdown defender who could grab rebounds, start transition, facilitate, a guy who could see two, three, four plays ahead? We didn't know. And it sucked for him to come into his second year and miss the entire season with a knee injury. From that point on, Exum struggled to stay healthy. Over the next five years or so, the most games that he played in was 66. He just could not get healthy. Played a few years with Utah, a couple years in Cleveland. But then he left the NBA entirely. He went to Spain to play over there. He played a year in Serbia. And now, as a 28-year-old, returned to the NBA with the Dallas Mavericks. As one might expect, his deal was modest. It was a two-year, $6 million deal with the second year being unguaranteed. And he has crushed it 
in his return to the league. The numbers are modest. I would say he's averaging a shade under eight points and three assists per game. But he's still contributing to Dallas's success. And they've experienced a lot of it over the last couple of weeks with pulling themselves out of out of the play and race. Obviously, a large portion of this is because of Luka Doncic and Kyrie Irving. But any successful team needs quality role players, whether that's Derek Lively, whether that's Maxi Kleba, or whether it's Dante Exum. And Exum has transformed his game with the explicit reason of returning to the NBA. The one statistic that jumps out at you for him is that he is shooting 49% from three. Great that he's only taken 108 attempts this year, but to have a guy who can hit 50% of their threes does incredible things for the spacing and the flow of Dallas's already dynamic offense. It's just another guy that the defense has to guard, meaning there is another guy that cannot help off and onto Luka. Additionally, he does bring good size. He is a very good secondary facilitator for this team, a guy that they can bring in off the bench. And yes, he won't take over any of these games, but he's able to play within the flow of the offense. He's able to direct traffic. He's able to make the right play. He's able to execute the proper read. And most of the time, you're going to stagger the minutes of Luka and Kyrie. So Exum is at no point ever going to have to be the face of an offense like how we maybe thought he'd have to be when he originally came into the league. I think a story like Exum highlights a few things. The first is that it is incredibly difficult for anybody to adjust to the NBA. You really have to be a generational talent to come into the league as a rookie and have a and have like a meaningful impact. You have to be a Victor Wembanyama. You have to be a Luka Doncic. You have to be a LeBron James. I'm mean, a couple of the premier guys in the league right now did not make they really just didn't show up. As rookies, you look at Nikola Jokic, you look at Giannis, Shea Gilgis, Alexander. These guys needed time to develop. I think Exum getting hurt in his second season impacted his career trajectory more than anything else because I'm looking at this roster for the Jazz the year he got drafted. They had a young team with some notable players on there. Gordon Hayward, Derek Favors, <laughs> University of Michigan legend Trey Burke, Rudy Gobert was on that roster. Oh my God, Joe Ingles was on that roster. This motherfucker is like a hundred years old. (laughs) And his freedom put a trip down memory lane. So it's not to say that, you know, this is an indictment on the Jazz as an organization. Um, It just, you know, injuries, injuries suck, man. I do want to get to something a little bit more positive, which is how Exa managed to reinvent himself to fit an NBA organization. He goes overseas, Works on his three-point shooting tremendously. He was at like, he was above 40% when he was in Spain and in Serbia both of those seasons. He finally figured out how to play basketball, I guess, how to understand it in a professional setting. And I think that going to Europe is an excellent spot to learn that just because of the differences in teaching. That is a huge part of it as well. The NBA, although it is still basketball, it is a different style of basketball that that not everybody can adjust to. And it also highlights that, yes, you can be a high lottery pick and have all of this potential to be a superstar. But that's not necessarily the case for everybody. And ultimately, what it comes down to is how do you impact winning? Of course, it's easy to say that nine years later. When you're taking Joel Embiid first overall, or you're taking a guy like Anthony Davis, or you're taking a guy like Michael Kidd Gilchrist early in the draft, you're expecting them to be a franchise-altering kind of player. Maybe a bit of the reason that the Jazz drafted Dante Exum was because they already had a guy on the wing in Gordon Hayward. They already had a guy in the center with Rudy Gobert. You needed a point guard to facilitate this group if you figured that they were going to grow together, which obviously didn't happen, but it just takes time. It really like it really takes time for these guys to grow into themselves. Also taking a break from the NBA, getting out of the States, and probably removing yourself from any of that additional pressure could do great things for your mental as well. 
some dudes, some guys respond to pressure differently than others. And as a 19 year old, I could very easily see how they get down on themselves because their situation isn't right. There are all these external factors. But I do think that playing alongside Luca, playing alongside Kyrie, playing alongside Tim Hardaway Jr., being around some of these older guys in the locker room has done great things for Exum's confidence as well as him having the necessary and the baseline skill to succeed in the NBA. So shout out to Dante Exum. One of the best stories in the NBA this season. Um, I'm going to go ahead and close this video out. Thank you all so very much for coming to hang out with me today. As always, everything I'm associated with is down in the description box below with Twitter, Instagram, TikTok. Subscribe to the channel. Leave a like on this video. If you enjoyed it, drop a comment as well. It really helps out with the algorithm. If you do any of those three things, you will become my new favorite person. And with that, I will see you all in the next one.